We're going to go ahead and get started. And the first order of business is to have a really big thank you to this incredible group of survivors and families. So, so appreciate your being here. There has been a lot of important work done in this room over the years. I'm chairman of the Senate Finance Committee. What these wonderful folks have come to talk to their government about is as important as it gets. Their bravery, in a sentence, is going to change the lives of Americans. And a few minutes ago, I released the findings of a two-year investigation into youth residential treatment facilities. The findings are simply horrific. And the report shows a terrible pattern of mistreatment and abuse happening to kids at facilities which now receive billions of dollars in federal funds. The report documents endless examples of sexual, physical, and verbal abuse, improper restraint, seclusion of young children, unsafe and unsanitary conditions, and even a lack of provision of behavioral health care. And our staff traveled to visit a number of these facilities to see these uh, operations firsthand. So in an hour, we're going to convene the Senate Finance Committee to discuss this report and make no mistake about what our work will be all about. We are going to stay at it until we end this abuse, period, full stop. Months ago, I invited Mark Miller, the CEO of Universal Health Systems, a major residential behavioral health care provider, to testify at the hearing we're having this morning. He stonewalled our invitation for months, declined last week. And I'll tell you, you're just left wondering, was he just too scared to face survivors of his own facilities in person. So, his absence speaks volumes about how this abuse has been able to escape under the radar with providers too often looking the other way and so many doing so much to shift blame and responsibility. So we're here to make it clear how determined we are that we're going to stay at it until business as usual ends. And then we stop this cycle of taxpayer dollars that foot the bill for child abuse in residential facilities. And what that means is we're going to cut off the fire hose of federal funding, bring stronger oversight to the system, expand behavioral health services in communities across the country so we reduce the need for kids to enter these facilities in the first place. So today is going to be about hearing from survivors and their loved ones who've experienced these problems at these facilities, and we're going to hear accounts that go into specifics. We're going to be joined by some people who've spent a lot of time a lot of sweat equity standing up for these kids and families. Nobody more so than the person standing with me, our state senator, Sarah Gelsa, Gelser uh, Bluent. She has been working on these issues for years as an advocate for these vulnerable kids, particularly in foster care in Oregon, but because she has been able to make substantive, real changes in these facilities, she's in demand all over the country to get these changes in motion. So I'm going to close by saying thank you to everybody who's here today, 
their willingness to shed light on the horrors that we document in this report, they're going to make a difference. They're going to make a big difference in bringing an end to this kind of care for kids in the future. With that, let me turn it over to Senator Bluen, and we'll have a few other speakers, and then we have a wonderful MC I'll introduce in a minute.